to know. In alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasul Allah. Again, can everybody hear me? Somebody type yes or no on the screen. If you can hear, okay, they can hear. Okay, I'm just lagging on my computer. Okay, we're continuing with the hadith from Sahih Muslim. We're in the first volume of Sahih Muslim. We're talking, uh, we're in Kitab El Tihara. We're talking about the book of purification. These are all hadiths addressing uh, how to make wudu, the rulings in regards to wudu, and to regards to taking a bath. We're going to cover menses, all of that. Today we're going to speak about wudu in regards to touching a dog. A lot of people ask that question, does a dog break your wudu? Also, what if a person urinates on your floor? Somebody comes in your house and urinates on your floor. Do I have to uh, scrub the whole floor clean in order to pray in there on it? And also, what if a baby, a baby urinates on you? Does that break your wudu? We're going to answer all these good questions to, tonight. First of all, again, I want everybody to understand that Allah makes the rules, not you and not me. If it's haram, if something is haram, the prophet told us there would be a verse from the Quran or a hadith from him that clearly states that the thing is haram. No one can impose conditions upon us other than Allah. If a person tells you that you have to do something or you should do something, they have to provide the hadith that clearly states that this is what you have to do. This is what you should do. Otherwise, they're giving their opinion and they're innovating. So now that brings us to the first question that many Muslims ask. What about a dog? Does touching a dog break your wudu? If a dog licks you, is your wudu broken? Well, let's look at this. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when a dog licks your utensils that you eat from, if you have a plate or a glass or a spoon or a knife and a dog licks it, then whatever was in the container should be thrown away. And the container should be washed several times, seven times. Say, for example, I have a plate of food. A dog comes and grabs uh, and licks uh, my plate and grabs my food off my plate. What do I do? Do I continue to eat the food? No, I get up and throw the food away. This is important, guys, because a lot of people love their dogs like they love their children. They let their dog sit there and eat from their plate. This is disgusting. If the dog licks, if his saliva, if the dog's saliva touches that plate, then whatever was inside that plate, whatever food you were eating should be tossed immediately into the trash. And then what you take that plate and you wash it seven times. And the, and, uh, the first time you wash it, you want to get some dirt. Go outside, dig up a little bit of dirt, bring a handful of dirt in the house, and then rub it on the plate. You guys understand? And don't ask me why. Remember, the prophet said dirt purifies whatever comes across it. So say, for example, I'm eating some spaghetti. I get up to go to the bathroom. A dog comes in my house, and it eats some spaghetti off my plate. licking up the spaghetti, lapping up the spaghetti. I'm going to run the dog out of here. I'm going to grab my plate and say, oh, my God, my spaghetti is no good now. I'm going to throw the spaghetti away. I'm going to take the plate into the kitchen, put it in the sink. I'm going to go outside. I'm going to go to a, a, where the grass is and dig up a little bit of dirt, a handful of dirt. I'm going to come in the house. I'm going to take that handful of dirt, rub it over that plate, the front of that plate and the back of that plate one time. And then I'm going to get me some soap some Dawn detergent or whatever my dishwashing liquid is, squirt some on that plate, and I'm going to wash that plate, you know, uh, uh, six more times. The first time I washed it, I washed it with the dirt. I'm going to wash it six more times with the Dawn to clean it. Is that clear? So that's if a dog eats from out of your dish or, say, a pot that you cooked you throw, I'm sorry guys, the chili's got to be thrown away. That dog came and licked out of that chili pot, it's got to go. 
the food has to be thrown away go grab a handful of dirt wash that pot the inside of that pot with dirt once and then uh set six more times with some liquid the dishwashing liquid okay i'm sorry that's just how it is say for example you drinking out of your 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 cup you left your cup on the table and the dog came and tried to stick his t stuck his tongue in there and lick the, the the drink out of your drink sorry Throw the rest of the drink away. Go get a handful of dirt from outside. Come in and wash the inside of that glass with it. Then the rest with the dawns for six times. This is the rules. Allah makes the rules, not you and not me. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, The purification of a utensil belonging to any one of you after it has been licked by a dog lies in washing it seven times using dirt the first time. So just go outside, get a little handful of, go reach down on the ground and pick up, dig a little hole and pick up a little bit of dirt and come on in and scrub it, rub it all over that dish. Rub it over the inside of that glass and the outside. Rub it over that plate the first time and then use your dishwashing liquid the other six times. Everybody understand that. And that's because the saliva of the dog is impure. And you don't want to eat behind him. Because their dogs have a, a germ that we humans can get that can cause problems for us. Even scientists have proven that. So we don't eat now. Cats are different. Do I have to do that with my cat? No. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said cats are like our children. You know, if a cat eats off my plate, okay, I don't have to throw my food away. I don't have to wash the plate seven times because cats are not dirty. Their saliva doesn't have the germ that the dog's saliva has. Does everybody understand that? And this is why we cannot have a dog as a pet. We cannot have dogs as a pet because their saliva, you know, is just not clean. That's why you can bathe a dog over and over and over again. That dog still has a smell, doesn't he? You can tell a person that has a dog for a pet when you go to their house, the house stinks. I don't care how clean that person is, they can't get rid of that smell of dog, wet dog, because their saliva is just impure like that. I mean, as far as, you know, like that, it has a disease in it, that germ in it. So this is why we don't have dogs as pets. And there was a time that the prophet had ordered Muslims to kill dogs and he did that not because he hated dogs or because dogs are bad it's because the jinn shaitan himself when shaitan wants to really take a form he can take on the form of a black dog and come after you and that's when the prophet ordered dogs to be killed but then he rescinded that he said wait a minute he said no 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 i don't we're not going to kill all dogs we're only going to kill the black ones that we see you know, if they come upon us and all that. And then he said, we can't have a dog as a pet, but we can have them for hunting and all like that. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam granted concession to keep a dog for hunting or for security or anything like that. He said, if you want to have a dog, it has to serve a purpose. It has to be a hunting dog or a, a, shep, a sheep dog or a fire dog or something. But we don't bring them in the house and make a pet out of them. He said, and if a dog eats from your utensil, wash it seven times and rub it with uh, one of those times with the dirt. So that's what the prophet taught us about a dog. Those are all the hadiths you're going to find about the dog. There is no hadith, I repeat. There is no hadith, I repeat. There is no hadith that mentions anything as to touching a dog breaking your wudu. All the hadiths address a dog eating from your plate. So the prophet told us <clears throat> what things break the wudu. And he did not list a dog as being that. Yes, their saliva is not clean, but they're not impure. It's a big difference. That's why I had to correct myself earlier. Their saliva is not clean because it carries a germ that can be very harmful to you. But their saliva is not impure to make your wudu or to make you 
unclean. So if I happen to touch a dog, my voodoo is fine. I don't have to make another voodoo. But what if the dog licks me? Well, even if he licks me, he doesn't break my voodoo. Because again, his saliva is not clean, but he doesn't, it's not impure. So some of the scholars will tell you the dog licking you does not break your voodoo, but just to be safe because it has that germ, the dog's saliva carries a germ in it that can be harmful to us. They say wash your hands seven times. If a dog licks you, just wash your hands because you don't want that nasty germ. But you don't have to make a complete voodoo and you're an, or any or take a gusso or any of that. Does everybody understand? And this is what we find um, from the hadith. You're not, again, if a dog invalidated my voodoo, there would be a hadith telling us that. The prophet told us the things that break the voodoo is passing gas, going into a deep sleep. But he did not mention anything, or uh, menses. He did not mention anything about a dog breaking your voodoo. So we cannot impose conditions or rules into his religion that were not imposed by Allah. And the prophet told us that Allah perfected this religion for us. He didn't forget anything. So touching the dog does not break my wudu. But the, some of the scholars say if the dog licks you, just wash your hands seven times because you don't want that germ that their saliva has to cause harm to you. And that's it. That's all there is about the dogs. Also, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us that it is forbidden, that means it's unlawful, to urinate in stagnant water or to stand and bathe in a stagnant water, such as a pond or something. Why? It makes sense. Stagnant water is water that doesn't flow. That water's polluted. Don't urinate in it. Why? Because if you, you urinate in polluted water, you're going to make the water it stink. It's going to cause diseases and stink. Water that does not flow, water that does not run, do not urinate in it. Because it has no way of cleansing or purifying itself. So that when you urinate or defecate in it, it's just going to turn into a big filthy mess and going to attract uh, uh, insects and lead to type of diseases, you know, that we get that, that can have, uh, make that can be harmful to us as human beings. So this is why we don't go around urinating in water that's that is stagnant like this picture here. This is a pond. You're not going to go urinate in that. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, none amongst you should urinate in standing water and then take a bath in it. Can you believe that some people would do that? You're going to sit here and urinate in this type of water and then take a bath in it too? Oh my God, how filthy. The water is not uh, running. It's not flowing. You're not getting rid of the waste. You're just bathing in urine. You're bathing in feces. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said you should not urinate in standing water, which is water that does not flow, and then take a bath in it. That's just disgusting. Everybody understand that. But what about this? What if you have no, no you have to take a bath and there's nothing but that standing water there? Well, how do I, but I need to clean myself. Then the prophet said you t take out handfuls of water. You don't stand inside it. Because if I jump in that pond and stand in that pond and bathe, my, the filth that's coming off of me is just going to pollute the pond and make it more filthy. He said if you have to, you have to use that water, he said, then take out handfuls of it and put it in a bucket or, or stand to the side on the ground and just dip your rag in there and use it to wipe yourself with. But do not sit there and urinate in it or stand in it and bathe yourself. It makes sense. Do you guys see how Allah is all about cleanliness and how our religion teaches us cleanliness? Being clean not only protects you and those around you, but the earth and all of that, the environment and all that too. Islam is all about what's clean and good. And that brings us to the next question that many Muslims ask. What about this? Somebody comes and urinates on your floor. Oh my God. He urinated on my kitchen floor. 
or he urinated on the floor, what do I do? Do I have to sterilize the kitchen or whatever? All you have to do is just mop the floor, clean the floor. That's all. We have the Hadith where as a Bedouin came into the mosque, he didn't know any better. He was a Bedouin. He didn't know he had any manners. He came in the mosque and he stood there and urinated. The people got up to beat him up and the prophet said, let the man alone. He doesn't know. Let him finish doing what he's doing. When the man finished, the prophet then uh, told them, go get a bucket of water and pour it over where he urinated at. Just pour water over it. You don't have to scrub the floor. You don't have to go through all this disinfecting and all that. Just pour water and wash the, wash the urine away. Get a hose and wash the urine away. Somebody come in your house and urinate on your floor. Just, you know, get a mop, mop the mop it up, mop your floor. You don't have to go and buy new carpeting or buy new this or whatever. I mean, just pour water over it and wipe it up, wash it up. Again, the religion is easy. Okay. And what about this? A baby. How many of us love little babies? You're holding a baby. The baby urinates on you. Oh my God, is your voodoo broken? Oh my God, he peed on my lap. Well, Aisha tells us that babies were brought to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he would bless the baby and all of that. One day a baby was brought to him and the baby urinated on his garment. The Prophet didn't go crazy. All he did was ask that some a bowl of water be brought to him and he sprinkled water over his garment and that was it. He didn't even wash it. But again, this was a newborn baby. These were babies who had not eaten food yet. Okay, Um Case, she was among the earliest female immigrant who swore allegiance to the Prophet. She was a sister of Vukasha. She said that she came to the Prophet with her son and he was not yet, he was a baby. He was not even eating regular food, eating food yet. He was just a baby who was still nursing. And he urinated on the prophet and the prophet just sprinkled water over it. So if it's a newborn baby or a baby that's not eating food, that is not yet even eating solid, solid foods, don't go crazy. Just, you know, wipe the urine off. Get you a tissue and some water and wipe it, wipe the urine off. That's it. It does not break your voodoo or any of that. And there's no need to take the garment and wash it either. Just, you know, get some water. Uh, put it over the uh, pour it over or get a, a wipe and wipe over the spot to clean it and that's it so what have we learned today from these wonderful hadiths all from sahih muslim well we learn number one that if a dog eats from your food throw the food away because we do not eat behind dogs you don't sit there sharing your food with a dog and if a dog eats from your dish you wash it seven times, once with dirt to purify it. Again, go outside, just get a little handful of dirt, bring it in and rub it, smear it on that, the front and the back of that dish, and then wash with your Dawn or your liquid detergent seven times, six more times. We also learned that touching a dog does not break the voodoo. We also uh, learned that even if a dog licks you, it does not break the voodoo. However, some of the scholars say that if a dog licks you, just wash your hands seven times because you don't want that germ uh, to cause any harm to you. Okay? And also we learned that dogs can be kept for hunting. We don't have to go around killing dogs and hating dogs. I like dogs. I love animals. But we just cannot keep a dog for a pet because of that saliva having that germ in it. But we can keep them to serve a purpose for guarding and hunting and all like that, but just don't have them as a pet. And also we learn that this applies only to dogs, not to cats or birds or anything else, just dogs. We also learn that it is forbidden to urinate in stagnant water because it's just nasty. You're going to pollute the, the earth with that. And also it's forbidden to take a bath in stagnant water that you have urinated in. Don't stand in a pool and take a bath. I mean, in a, a, a pond and take a bath. You know, dip some water out the pond if you have to and use it. But don't stand in there because you're just putting the, the, the filth into the pond and make it more polluted. And also we learned that if a person urinates on the floor, 
just clean it with water take a mop get you some mop mop it up you don't have to go crazy and go get a brand new floor or any of that and finally the urine of an infant child who is not yet on solid foods does not break the voodoo either if a baby or a child urinates on you just sprinkle water over the area and wipe it that's it again Islam is simple the Prophet told us what things break the voodoo and what things don't anybody that tells you otherwise has to bring their evidence to prove what they say you hear all kind of stories about dogs all kind of stories about what breaks the voodoo and you ask these people to bring proof they can't bring you nothing that's why it's important for you guys to continue to join these classes every day because we're going to cover all the hadiths every volume of Sahih Muslim it's going to probably take us a year or two to go through these this whole all these volumes but it's important that you guys continue to join here so you can learn the true Islam and not sit here and listen to the myths and garbage that people make up so we'll stop right here if you guys have any questions or comments inshallah type them on the screen again I want to remind everybody may Allah bless the people who have sent in donations we have two hundred dollars in our account right now thank you because the donation we got covered those other two expenses that came out but we have more expenses it takes again fifteen hundred dollars a month to run this website and we have more expenses getting ready to come out uh, one on Friday for two hundred dollars and we got some more next week so please guys you know we are a nonprofit organization all your donations go to pay for what it costs the internet fees and program fees and all that it costs money to run a website it's not free the program that we use and all the the software I use to make these videos and stuff this stuff ain't free you know please guys those of you who can afford to donate please help by donating to keep this uh, our effort going we're not asking for a million dollars or for two hundred thousand all we're asking for is a few hundred fifteen hundred dollars that's all each month okay alright so we'll stop right here if you guys have any questions or comments you can type them on the screen